Now it's time for RTB 101. This is the segment where we talk about practical questions to help equip you to share your faith with friends and family more effectively. Today to help me address one of a very common question is Dr. Hugh Ross. Welcome back, Hugh. Thank you. Now, I know that uh, I, sometimes I go on atheist websites, but sometimes I also talk to children and notice they have a question in common. And that is, if God made everything, then who made God? So walk us through this a little bit, because from a lay person's perspective, we're thinking, well, everywhere I look, things have a beginning, but God doesn't have a beginning, so how do I think about that? Well, you're hitting the right question. It's the most frequent question I get in Facebook and Twitter. Really? Every atheist scientist I've ever debated publicly has raised that issue. Probably the most famous example is Lewis Walpart, uh, the debate I had at Imperial College. He was really eager to bring that question up because he thinks that is the Achilles heel That's the zinger. of the Christian faith. That's the zinger. It's going to get you. All it's right. going to get us. But I think you raised the point is that uh, there, there's a fallacy there. They're assuming that God is constrained in time like the universe is and all of life in the universe. And any entity that's constrained to a single dimension of time where time can't be stopped or reversed at some ultimate point must have a beginning or a creation event. And that's where we are. We only have that's where we are. one we only have access to one dimension of time. Right. As much as I would like to go back to my girls' childhoods, I can't do that. Time goes time forward. Time goes forward. We can slow it down, but you can't stop it or okay. reverse it. So So then every it's right to say everywhere I look, things have a beginning, but something is different about God. So help me think well, about that. Once we understand that God created time, he's not subject to time, he's the author of time. Okay. And what I explained to Lewis Walpard is it's physicists in Britain that developed the first of the space-time theorems, which established that time has a beginning, that time was created, implying there must be an agent outside of time that creates time. And this is the claim that the Bible makes repeatedly, that time is a beginning and that God was the one that created both space and time. And if God is not subject to linear time, then he need not have a beginning or an ending. Now, I think the way you can understand that, the Bible also claims in Psalm 90 that uh, God can arbitrarily compress time and expand time. A day of the Lord is like a thousand years. A thousand years is like a day. A thousand years is like three hours in the night. And that's mathematically only possible for a being or an entity who can operate in at least the equivalent of two dimensions of time. So one of the things I've done in Beyond the Cosmos is give you diagrams showing how if you've got access to two dimensions of time, you can arbitrarily compress or expand time along a single dimension of time. Okay. So that's so, what the Bible claims. All right, so let's unpack that a little bit more, make sure people don't miss these critical points. One is that Scripture says in a few different places that time has a beginning. Time was created. Right. Which makes us think that God is the one who created time, so he must stand outside of time. Right. Okay. <clears throat> and also you made the very thoughtful point that that could potentially mean God has access to other dimension, another, at least one other dimension of time. That or the equivalent. Oh, I'm not equivalent. saying that's okay. the way it is, but at least something that, like that. Just based on the fact that the Bible says God can arbitrarily compress or expand time okay. in our time dimension, mathematically that minimally applies that God's got access to the equivalent of two dimensions of time. And we now have the physics that proves that time actually does have a beginning okay. that is created. And so it explained to both my sons when they asked that question when they were three and a half, and to Lewis Walpart, uh, who was the chairman of the biology department at one time at Imperial College, if you got two dimensions of time, you could have God operating on a timeline over here, infinitely long, that never crosses or touches a timeline of our universe over here. As such, he would have no beginning, no ending, and it would be uncreated. Now, of all the world's holy books, the Bible is the only one that says of God, no beginning, no ending, uncreated, 
the master of time, the author, and the creator of time. Well, I, I, you just anticipated right where I was going to go next, and that is, how does this view of God compare with the views of God, other gods in other religions? And so are they, would they say that they're more confined by the same time constraints that we have? Yeah, the one caveat is there are religions that I would call uh, biblically based religions. Okay. Like Mormonism and Islam. They okay. accept the Old and New Testament and they add additional material. Okay. And the part that they take, the Old and New Testament, is consistent with this idea that God has no beginning, no ending, and that He is the author and master of time. But if you look at the non biblical religions, it's God or gods working within time. The okay. gods are subject to time rather than over time okay. and the creator of time. And that explains why in those religions, these gods behave a lot like we do because they're under the same constraints that we humans are under. So this makes me think that this could actually be a, a powerful um, piece of evidence for the reliability of the Bible, that it describes time having a beginning. It, it kind of predates the scientific discovery. Yes, I mean, this, these statements were made thousands of years before physicists and astronomers actually proved that time has a beginning, that time is created, and there must be some causal agent uh, beyond time. When you have used this approach in your experience with non-Christians, is this effective? Is this going to be a good approach for people to use? I found it very effective because often I say, this is something I've never thought about before, this really makes sense. So it's field tested. It's field tested. Thanks, Hugh. And I want to encourage you, if you haven't yet checked out Hugh's blog, go to reasons.org and type in today's new reason to believe.